is what convinced us. The blood is a speaking blood. Convinced us that it would be better to serve righteousness. There are greater redemptions. There are wider opportunities. The problem is this. We live in the spirit, but very few of us walk in the spirit. When you are put over two people, make the light shine. First Kings chapter 7, verse 26. I want to show you something. And 2 Chronicles 24, verse 5. Now, when we read Jeremiah 52, the verse 21, when we read Jeremiah 52, the verse 21, what's something? There's something that is running through it. He said, and concerning the pillars, the height of one pillar. Now, let's go to verse 20. Look at this, verse 20. The two pillars, one sea, and 12 bracing booths, that were under the bases which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. Now that is, it was uncountable. Okay, so now he said the two pillars. Are you here? Yes. And then he said the next one, and the one C. Watch this. The two pillars and the one C. The two pillars and the one C. The two pillars. So we spoke of how that the pillars were tied with a rope. That was what? Handspread. It was four fingers. It was a hand's spread. And we know that this pillar is Jashin, which answers to what? The what? The priesthood. And which hand is it? The hand of? life and we know that Boaz answers to what business which is the hand of wealth riches honor money all right now, having understood this you realize it is only in Jeremiah that when he's speaking he combines all of those vessels together he said the two pillars one sea and twelve brazen bulls the two the two pillars the one sea and the 12 brazen bulls that were under the bases which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord. The brass of all these vessels was without weight and concerning the pillars. And concerning the pillars, the height of one pillar was 18 cubits and a fillet of 12 cubits did compass it. And the thickness thereof was four fingers. It was hollow. Okay, so now let us go back to First Kings and look at this. Well, we're reading. Okay, let's go to 23. Okay, and he made, everybody please read with me, and a molten sea. It's okay. He made a molten sea. He made a molten sea. It was round all about. Actually, it was this way. A molten sea. Then he said, and his height was five cubits, and a line of 30 cubits did compass it round about. Now, let's go. And under the brim of it, now let's go to 20, 25 instead. 25, 25. It stood upon 12 oxen. It stood upon 12 oxen. There was one. And then on the other place. So if we take this to be north, south, east, and west. Now look at it. It stood upon 12 oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above them, and all their hinder parts were inward. So that is to say that you could only see their face. But that from the neck down was inside. It was only their faces you could see. And the back was what the bracing sea or the molten sea had been set upon. It sat on their backs. So there were three here, 
Can I get 12 people and quickly do this? 12 people. So now, the C sat from here. That way, it sat on them. So you could lift your head. You could only see good, 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 good. You could only watch this way. You could only see their faces. So this was north, south, east, and west. And it sat all on them. <laughs> Amen. All right. So now it sat there. Please take your seat. That's, that's all I wanted to show. Okay. He said, And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. Next verse. And my goodness. And it was an hand bread thick. The thickness. Was also an hand bread. What was he saying? The pillar. The thread that tied the two pillars together was a hand bread. The molten sea, the thickness. Was a hand breath. That is to say that you know that the sea, the Bible refers to the multitude of humanity as the sea. It was supposed to be a hand breath. The molten sea, what it carried, the thickness of the bowl was a hand breath. That is to say, it was actually the life of humanity that was carrying the word or the water of the word. Which was for the washing of the priest. Now, if you got that one, the next thing is that there were 12 oxen underneath the molten sea. Now, the 12 oxen referred to as an evangelistic and apostolic ministry. The oxen, it referred to the evangelistic and apostolic ministry. Now, one oxen was evangelistic, but 12 spoke of the governmental authority of the apostolic evangelistic commission. Whenever you refer to the 12 oxen, most people only see the evangelistic. Because when you look at the face of Jesus as an ox, he was presented as the worker in the fields. The one that works in the fields. The one that works the field of souls. Now, souls are not only to be won, but they are also to be under apostolic unction to be established, episterizo. They must be confirmed by the apostles. They are brought in by the evangelists. They are worked on by the other threefold ministry of the prophet and then the teacher and then the pastor. And then they are confirmed by the apostles. And that due order and decrees, the apostles define what the pastors and the prophets and the teachers are supposed to impart to the people in the season of their growth. Now, so the evangelists go out there to win the souls. They are the inlet. And then the apostles are the outlets unto the maturity of saints. So that they will measure to the fullness of the stature of the body of Christ. That they might come to the fullness. Of Christ. So now we realize that the apostles are on this side, and then the evangelists are on the other side, and the other threefold ministry of prophet, pastor, and teacher are working the souls that came in. Now, this is what it means the evangelists get them out of the world, bring them into the church, and then the apostles, before that, by the age of prophets, pastors, and teachers will build them up. The apostles will come and do a complete work and then send them out into the world to go and bring in the souls again. So now the work becomes continuously improving. It's an ever-increasing work. It goes through a continuous process, an ending, and season. So now, if you got that one, as you follow, the word of God speaks in the book of Titus concerning the washing of regeneration. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So we were saved, brought in. How? He said, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, the reason why he speaks of the renewing, the anabzuzis, the, the catching afresh, the divine breath which we lost. 
the restoration of the bread which we lost, that divine bread that was placed in the nostrils of Adam for which he lost when men became increasingly wicked and God said, my spirit will not strive or dwell with man again and his day shall be 120. It is in this day when we are brought to this place of the brazen sea as priests and we watch our faces because within the sea was, it was referred to as a molten sea. That is to say a mirror sea where we could see our faces. The Bible says that we are with open faces beholding us in a glass the glory of God and are changed into the same image that we are seeing. The Bible says that the word of God is a mirror that when we look into it and we are conscious and never forgot, forgetting we go forth not only doing the word but doing also the works. So now we start off in the outer court of God's holy sanctum or his holy temple by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. He said, having saved us, how? By the washing of regeneration. The word of God says that, that he might present unto himself a glorious shed without spot or wrinkle. But before then he said that he might wash him or sanctify him by the washing of water by the word. So the word of God does the washing. When you hear the word of God, we are purified. We are cleansed. We are washed. Actually, the word and the blood are one and the same. The Bible said they overcame him by the word of their testimony and they overcame came also by the blood. There is no distinction between the blood, the spirit, and the word. They overcame him by the washing. The Bible said that, and Jesus was raised from among the dead by the blood of Jesus. In another place, he said he was raised from among the dead by the spirit of God. Then in also another place, he also refers to the spirit, the water, and the blood. My goodness. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three, they agree as one. You cannot distinct the spirit, the water and the blood. So there is a washing of the blood. The Bible said and have made their, their robes pure by washing it in the blood of the lamb. They were blood washed. The word of God also says we are water washed. The word of God also says that we are spirit washed. So he said we got saved. We got saved by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost which is one and the same. Come on some, come on, come on, come on. Now as we go downwards into first kings and in chronicles he now says something very definite he said that the water that this molten sea could take others think that it is a discrepancy others think that it is it is it is a wrong writing and so in reading it i'll show it to you right now he says that it holds three thousand baths that is to say it holds three thousand vessels in another place he said it holds two thousand vessels why and how can the scripture so conflict itself it is not a conflicting it's not a conflict. He said, and it was an hand bread thick. The thickness, it was a hand bread thick. That is to say, it was the life of humanity. That was carrying the water of the word by the washing of water by the word that he might cleanse it by the washing of water by the word and present it unto himself a glorious church. He said we were saved by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Spirit which is one and the same. The anabzusis, the recovery of bread. Everybody say amen. amen. Now back to what we're doing. He said we're saved not by works of righteousness but we're saved by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the spirit. That is how we got saved. We got saved by the blood. We got saved by the water of the word. And we also got saved by the spirit. It's one and the same. Because in the earth, these three must agree. The water, the spirit, and the blood. They must agree. The water, the spirit, and the blood. The spirit saved us. The blood saved us. And the water of the word also saved us. Amen. Amen. That is how come you cannot say you are born again until you believe in the baptism of John. Because John was the one who was pointing and showing the way of righteousness. Our salvation did not begin from the cross. It started with the baptism of John. When the priesthood shifted from the ironic priesthood and then Jesus by means. 
So the introduction of the Melchizedek priesthood started a new course. For which reason I started off in Hebrews. And I told you that it is a comparative book. In the days of the Levitical order of Aaron, we look at John the Baptist. But he was the last high priest of humanity. He was supposed to usher in Jesus Christ. And this whole ushering in started from the womb, people. It started from the womb. When Elizabeth had conceived John the Baptist and had not had him kick, Mary walked into the house and just said, Hail Elizabeth. And instantly, John came alive because there was a connect of their ministry. They were tied together. There was something written in the palms of John that was connected to the ministry of Jesus that he could not but leap, but to shout and to come alive so that he would complete the task six months ahead of time. So this whole thing was worked in the womb. Destiny. Like I told you, Paul said, oh God, who called me from my mother's womb? He called me. He separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. He separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. It all started in the womb. Grace started in the womb. So now, we see John the Baptist baptizing Jesus, laying his hands on him, and passes the sin of the whole world. So the next day, the Bible said, and John was the one who gave the pointer. This is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the whole world. You must believe in the baptism of John. If you don't believe in the baptism of John, you have nothing doing with the cross. Your salvation must begin with believing in the baptism of John, which fulfills all righteousness. He said, allow us to fulfill righteousness. The demand of righteousness started with the baptism of John. What is righteousness? What is iniquity and how does God handle it? Does doing good make one righteous? What makes one righteous? What does God have to say on judgment and righteousness? These and many more are the nagging questions on the heart of every man that are answered in this new faith revolutionizing book, Decrypting Righteousness, God's Canon for Man. In this classic expose, The Man of God, Pastor Obed brings with clarity and deep insights the whole counsel of God on the subject of righteousness as presented by the scriptures. In this book, you will come to a complete understanding of God's canon of righteousness and His plan and purpose for all His creation, both in this age and in the ages to come. Grab your copy now from the CCI bookshops in Accra and Kumase or contact our international headquarters. You can also place an order on www.christcosmopolitan.org. Shalom. Quickly. So now, I just want to explain something about the 3,000 and the 2,000 baths. 2 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 5. Okay, so now we, we are going to just oppose the two and I'll explain something to you. Now, let's quickly do 1 Kings 7 and then we'll come to 2 Chronicles. Can we read together everybody? Go. It was an handbreadth thick and the brim thereof was round like the brim of a cap. Amen? I can't hear you. Do you know that the New Testament is a cap? He said this is the cup of the New Testament established in my blood. Amen? Amen? All right. With flowers of lilies, and I wish I could explain to you lilies, the shushan, the trumpets. Psalm 45. Now he also speaks in the book of Ezekiel. He spoke of how that he was at shushan in that day and he had encounters of God. So you just go back and look at the shushan. Psalm 45. And in the book of Ezekiel, he speaks of shushan. And the the glorious thing about Shushan has to do with the mouth. So when King Solomon looks at his beloved, King Solomon being Christ, and looking at the beloved being the church, he said, and when I watched her lips, it was like lilies of the valleys. <laughs> it was like lilies of the valleys. That is to say, she carried good news on her lips. I don't have the time to deal with how women are supposed to comfort their husbands with good news. To the extent that there are some women, when they open their mouth, my goodness, you will see the rose of Shammah. <laughs> Shammah. <laughs> 
You go back and read all the lilies, all the lilies in Song of Songs. It has, it refers to the mouth. The gracious oratories of the mouth. Every woman that doesn't know how to boss the husband. Now, you know what? When we are going out, when we start going out, it is men that war women. But when we marry, it is women that war their husbands. And that is how come every woman must learn how to woe. You must learn how to talk well to your husband. You, you, are, you, are, you are one amongst a thousand. You must have the vibes for your husband. Listen, when we get married, all our vibes go. We lose it. Look at this. He said his cheeks at the time, I'll, I'll talk about the cheeks of the woman. He said his cheeks are as a bed of spices. That is to say that you don't have to wake up in the morning and when you open your mouth, your, your husband is going away. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet as flowers. His lips like lilies, dropping sweet smelling meh. Give me all the lilies in the Bible. In Song of Songs, Song of Songs. The lilies, the lilies. I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. He feedeth among the lilies. He said, my beloved is gone down. <laughs> my beloved is gone down into his garden to the best of spices to feed in the gardens and to gather lilies. Later. So now let me focus on what I'm doing. I'm dealing with the secret seals of the hands. He said, and the thickness of it was an hundred, and the brim of it like the work of the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. Watch this. You know why he said the mouth? Watch this. And the thickness of it was an hundred, and the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. The mouth had the flowers of lilies around it. And then he said, it contains. It is able to carry this. It is able to carry 3,000 baths. Read in the NIV and the Amplified. 2 Chronicles 4 verse 5. It was a hundred in thickness. And its rim was like the rim of a cup. Like a lily blossom. It held 3,000 baths. Now what this? Its thickness was a hundred. Its brim was like the brim of a cup, like the flower of a lily. It held 3,000 baths, measures, the same message, quickly. The sea was three inches thick and flared up at the rim like a cup or a lily. It held about 18,000 gallons. Now, Men, we have within us water. But the water we have, we empty it into the molten sea of women. And then we are able to produce humanity. That is Adam and Eve. Now, this is what happens. As you read the account of 1 Kings chapter 7, he said that... TC is able to receive 2,000 gallons, 2,000 baths. But now, as we read in 2 Chronicles, he said it is able to receive 3,000. What is he trying to say? It held about 11,500 gallons. But how come this same account of the sea, he said it held about 18,000 gallons. Until you have read it in the King James, you'll be reading it held, it held. Let's go and read it in the King James and see what he said. Read, come on. And was a handbreadth thick, and the brim thereof was round like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. It contained, it contained 2,000 baths. But now in 2 Chronicles, he said it can receive. And it received and held. 
That is to say, its capacity was 3,000 baths. But at the moment, they filled it with 2,000 baths. What is he trying to say? When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, wow, my God, up until this dispensation was 2,000 years, speaking of 2,000 waters of humanity. But now as we cross over into the third day, day where we usher into the capacity of the church of the millennium where the church now comes forth as the church glorified you know what we are showing for right now is really not our capacity it is what we are carrying around and the thing that is all we are I want you to know that you haven't seen the church yet we are only carrying 2,000 bars but that is not our capacity we have capacity for a thousand more and I believe in that day he said by the cleansing of water by the word now what this that is the 2000 bath then he said that he might present unto himself a glorious church when we have the glorious church in the book of Ezekiel the glorious church is the church in the millennium where we move in our thousands a thousand on the kneecap a thousand on the waist a thousand on the chest then we begin to swim so now the church as you have it now has gone into the thousand thousand year time after Jesus Christ died and if you know this very well you know that we are yet to enter it because Jesus assuming assuming he died at age 33 it will mean that it will take 2033 years for the 2000 years after the death of Jesus Christ for this bracing sea to hold the capacity because it is supposed to hold 2000 bars let's put it this way 2000 gallons which is 11,500 gallons but permit me for the sake of calculation and years so now in 2,000 years that is what we are supposed to receive but that is not all the church can take after it has taken the 2,000 gallons now it has capacity it's real capacity it's real glory it's real affluence its emanation is at the 3,000 level. You haven't seen the church yet. We are about flowing and moving in a capacity unknown to the world. You know what? There's coming a day we don't need to knock on doors. We will walk through the world. There is coming a day they will say if we don't have money, we cannot buy or sell. But you know, we have gone beyond buying or selling with money. We buy Jesus. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah, come buy without money. Money. Come buy with our money. Come drink with our money. It will not be according to buying or selling. It will be the commerce of faith. It will be under the auspices of faith. So you know what? In the 2000 years, we buy, we sell. We are going through the rudiments, the raising up, the chastening of the Lord. But when we have come of age, we'll be presented at the medallion of God to the world. I foresee the church beyond 2040 coming into a realm of the beginnings of the very glory of God it will not be the apex and for your information the apex of the church will come about a thousand and a little bit years ahead what a season we are in and we are those that will mark the age where the church moves from the two days of his death into the third day of his resurrection the bible said he said he will be buried in the earth when Jesus died and was buried the devil thought he had won the devil thought there was so much confusion all around that he had taken over the day but the first day went and Jesus was still in the grave the second day went Jesus was still in the grave then came the third day the bible said the rock split Jesus came out of the grave you know how he did the bible said if the spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lived and abided in you he shall by that same spirit quicken and quicken and revitalize your mortal body in the third day of the church when we have come into the place of divine manifestation yes. when the church would have been ushered into the dimension of God's great glory Jesus. we will come into the dimension of God's great wealth we will come into the dimension of God's great glory the great glory of longevity Jesus. in that day he said a child will die at 100 years My God. and he that shall die at 100 
said he is, shall be considered as a sinner, which speaks of this hand, the hand of longevity. Jesus. We are about being ushered awesome. into that day into and, that age, day and age, age where we know how to awaken youthfulness, Jesus. where we know what to do to live long. My God. We understand that the Bible had already said Goodness. you will drink water not from the well outside, no. but you will drink water from, from your own system. Take your seat. Glory to God. Glory to God. What a time in the world. It's been an experience unforgettable. I believe that the revelation of the word of God that has come to you would remain in your heart. Your faith has been built up. The fruits will show. You know what I want you to do with me? I'd like for us to pray. And I believe that as we pray together, you would see the hand of God in a way you've never experienced before. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for my dear viewer. I thank you that the word that they heard has been planted deeply in their hearts. I believe that you are here to confirm the words that they've heard with mighty signs and miracles following. Touch the thirsty heart. Touch the one that is hungry. I give you praise that they are filled, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, faith cometh by hearing. times and seasons in your hands. You called for life.